The Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. the whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program in radio history. And Signal Gasoline is tops, too. Tops in quality. It takes extra quality, you know, to give you extra mileage. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. So look for the Signal Circle sign in yellow and black that identifies friendly dealer-owned Signal stations from Canada to Mexico. And now, the Whistler's strange story. The Silent City. For 15 years, George Malcolm had been a reader for the Latimer Publishing Company. 15 years plowing through the tangled syntax, the dull metaphors, the silly little scribblings of people who think they can write without learning how. And he was sick of it. Why, George Malcolm knew more about writing than they ever would. However, he hadn't been able to sell that idea to his boss, Mr. Latimer, though he'd tried time and time again without success. Yes, George Malcolm knew the meaning of the word frustration too well. But on that morning early in April, as he walked into Mr. Latimer's office to try again, George didn't realize that he would also soon learn the meaning of the word murder. Uh, Mr. Latimer? Oh, yes, George, you wanted to see me. Uh, Yes, sir. I've uh, written a few chapters of a new novel. Oh, now, George, really, you haven't been writing again. Oh, this time, Mr. Latimer, I think I've hit on something. Now, look, we've been all through this before. You write well, yes, Yeah, If you'll only let me tell you about it, sir. All right, all right. Tell me about it. Well, it's about a sea captain, a young man from Boston, the year 1805. He sails for the South Seas. You ever been to sea, George? About uh, what, sir? You ever been to sea? Well, uh, 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 no, sir. What do you know about sailing ships, the South Seas? Well, I suppose I know as much as the next fellow, enough to get by. Enough to get by? <laughs> George, listen to me. You're a good reader. You can spot talent at ten paragraphs in someone else's manuscript. But when it comes to writing, your stuff just doesn't have the heart. You just won't write about things you know. Won't you even read what I've written, sir? Oh, very well. Leave it on the table on your way out. <laughs> It's the same old runaround, isn't it, George? You're burning with rage as you leave Latimer's office. Walk between the stacks of new novels bright in their gaudy jackets. And seeing them, you know that more than anything else in the world, you want your name on books such as these. And you don't care how it gets there. When you reach your desk, you find it piled high with manuscripts. You begin to leaf through them, thinking more of how your $100 a week looks stacked beside the royalties of a bestseller than what you're reading. And then deep at the bottom of the stack, you find a manuscript typed on cheap bond. You're about to toss it aside when the title catches your eye. The Silent City, a novel by Mary Jordan. You lean back in your chair and begin to read. There is a city we see and a city we hear... And the silent city of terror. There is the crying gargoyle that lies behind the laughing face of the silent city. There is frustration here for the big and small. Well, not bad. Not bad at all. It interests you, doesn't it, George? Hastily, you glance through the first few chapters... There are some mistakes in construction and approach, 
But the talent, the heart is there. The mistakes can be corrected. And how you wish you had written this novel, you turn back to the top sheet. What's the matter, George? You've hardly said a word all evening. Hmm? Haven't you been listening to me? Oh, oh I'm sorry, Oka. Has the mind rejoined the body? <laughs> yes, yes, sure, baby. Can't waste our date just daydreaming, huh? Oh, some date bringing you to a cheap joint like this. I I'm sick of these places, Ilka. What? But it won't always be like this, darling. Someday we'll be sitting on top of the world, the two of us. I know, honey. I haven't been complaining. No. No, you've been swell, but I mean it. It won't always be like this. Oh, you've been thinking... I've uh, been thinking about writing another book. I thought so. Mention it to your boss, um... What's his name, Latimer? Oh, Latimer. He would know a good novel if you hit him over the head with it. Why, that old goat can't see any farther than the tip of his cigar. Your stuff just doesn't have the heart, George. George. You just won't write about the things you know, George. Why, I could bash his ugly... Take it easy, darling. Take it easy. You'll have everybody in the place gawking at us. Well, uh, let him gawk. Your new book. What's it about? Well, I, I'd i rather not tell you about it now, Ilka. Surprise, huh? Uh, yes. Yes, that's it. Well, darling, whether you ever write the great American novel or not, it, it wouldn't make any difference to me. It would to me. Just one book, Elka. That's all I need to break the ice. One good novel. Perhaps the novel you're going to work on, George. Perhaps that'll be it. Yeah. I've got a hunch it will be. After you take Elka home... You walk the streets for a long time, thinking, thinking about the silent city, Mary Jordan and Beachmont. It's a desperate chance to take, isn't it, George? And you're afraid to think of the consequences. It's almost two in the morning when you return to the downtown district. And suddenly up ahead, you see the red neon sign flashing on and off over the wide doors. It's like an answer, and you know what you're going to do. You hurry inside the depot, then to the ticket window. Yes, sir? When is the next bus pulling out north on the main line? Uh, not till 3.30. Get you up to Goldfield by noon. I'm no? not going that far. Give me a ticket to Beachmont. With the prologue of The Silent City, the Signal Oil Company brings you another strange story by The Whistler. Friends, you've heard me tell about the more thorough, more conscientious attention cars get at signal service stations because each signal dealer owns his own business and has a personal interest in pleasing you. Well, typical of this is the free inspection of your radiator and cooling system, now being offered by signal dealers throughout the West from Canada to Mexico. You see, as a car grows older, its radiator may become clogged with rust and sludge or develop small leaks. To correct such conditions, signal dealers offer a complete radiator service. They have special rust and sludge dissolving compound that restores your radiator's cooling efficiency but can't harm the metal. If your radiator has any small leaks, your signal dealer has radiator sealer that stops them in a jiffy. And in any case, even with new cars, it's wise to add rust preventive that protects both radiator and motor from future corrosion. So the next time you stop at a signal station, be sure to ask for your free radiator inspection. This is just another in our complete line of signal safety services, each designed to help your car run better, look better, and last longer. And now back to the whistler. And so, early Saturday morning, a few hours before dawn, you're aboard the bus rolling north toward Beachmont and Mary Jordan, author of The Silent City. Quite a novel, isn't it, George? It's literature, something you would have been proud to have written. And you're certain of something else, too, aren't you? You're certain that when the book is published, it will carry your name. <laughs> It's a few minutes after 10 in the morning when your bus arrives at Beachmont. 
A quiet, sleepy little town just off the main highway. And a quarter of an hour later, you're walking down Miller Avenue, a quaint little side street shaded by huge pepper trees. In the middle of the block, you find the address you're looking for. 375, a flight of wooden steps and a flat upstairs. Yes? Miss Jordan? Miss Mary Jordan? Yes, I... I don't think I know you. <laughs> but I know you, Miss Jordan. That is, I should say, I know your work. My... my work? I'm George Malcolm. I represent the Latimer Publishing Company. The... the Latimer... Oh, 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 yes, yes, won't you come in? Thank you. Oh. I hope I'm not disturbing you, Miss Jordan. I know it's a little oh, early. Oh, no, no, not at all. I, oh, I'm sorry, the apartment is... Uh, well, I didn't expect you. <laughs> May I sit down? Oh, yes, yes, please do... Oh, here, I'll get these things out of the way. <laughs> so you're Mary Jordan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, we've uh, read your novel, Miss Jordan. Oh. Oh? Yes, and uh, frankly, we like it. We like it a lot. You like it? Oh, I've worked on it so long. Put in a good many hours on it, huh? Oh, yes, most of it during the evening. Well, fortunately, I have the flat to myself. It's, it's so much easier to write. Oh, than... you live alone? Yes, that's right. I I've only been here in Beachmont a short time. I'm... I'm from Illinois. I see. And when Mother died, well, there was nothing to keep me back home. And, well, I, I just thought it would be better if I went out on my own. Of course, of course, I understand. Tell me, Miss Jordan, what do the good citizens of Beachmont think of your writing? Oh, they don't. Well, what do you mean? I mean, they don't know anything about it. Oh, oh, they don't. Oh, no. In a small town like this, they'd laugh at me. Besides, what does a waitress know about writing novels? So that's where you got your material for The Silent City. Oh, yes. I, I met so many interesting people, so I wrote about them. Oh, I've always wanted to write, and it was easy, writing about people. I was told always to write about the things I know. Uh, yes, yes. <clears throat> now, about your novel, Miss Jordan. As I said before, it's far better than the average. However, we feel it will need uh, considerable rewriting. Oh, oh, I wouldn't mind rewriting. I wouldn't mind at all. You'll need help, of course. That's why I came up here to Beachmont, Miss Jordan. It's uh, part of my job, you know. Oh, then, then you're really going to publish my novel? Just as soon as we make all the necessary changes. Oh, uh, about the rewrite. Well, will I have to go into town? Oh, no, no. No, no, that won't be necessary. I think we can work better right here. Nice and quiet, no one to disturb us. And the sooner we start, the better. Well, I, I don't have to go to the cafe until five this afternoon. Then I suppose I could get Margie to work tonight for me. Yes, you... why don't you do that? And um, do you think you could arrange to have every Saturday off from now on? That would fit into my schedule perfectly. I'll try. I think Margie will be willing to trade dates with me. I'll, I'll call her right now. She doesn't have to know why. Good. And, uh, you know, Mary, if I were you, I wouldn't let anyone know you're working on this novel until it's ready for publication. Oh, I won't tell a soul if you think it's best. Oh, you don't know what it means to me to have my book published. It means a lot to me, too, Mary. It couldn't have worked out any better, could it, George? All day Saturday and into the black hours, you sit by Mary Jordan and her typewriter and guide the writing of the silent city. It's almost three o'clock in the morning when you decide it's time to return to town. You leave Mary with a handful of notes, suggestions for her to work on during the week while you're gone. When you return to your apartment in town, you tumble into bed without bothering to take your clothes off. It's almost noon when the phone wakes you. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Good morning, George. Oh, Helka. George, I... I thought we had a date last night. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Elka. I couldn't make it. I was busy. Well, you could have called me, George. Yes, yeah, sure, sure, but I was writing, and I, I just didn't want to be bothered. Oh, am I bothering you, George? Oh, baby, baby, listen. I'll let it go, George. I, I don't want to quarrel with you. Elka, give me a break, will you? I've got a lot on my mind. Another girl? Oh, sweetheart, what kind of talk is that? I couldn't make it any clearer. Elka, be you've got to believe me. I, I, I was busy writing. All right, George. All right. Now, look, honey, look, I I'm dead tired. Be a good girl and let me finish my nap, huh? I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Oh, very well. And, George. Yes? If there is anyone else, don't let me know. I wouldn't like it. 
Come in, George. Come in. Your uh, secretary said you wanted yes, to see... Yes, yes. I want to have a talk with you, my boy. Sit down. Sit down. Thank you, Mr. Latimer. You know that stuff about the sea, Captain George. Terrible, terrible. But this... This, my boy, this story about the waitress in a small town cafe, wonderful, frustrated people, best seller stuff if I ever saw it. The, uh, the Silent City? Yeah, wonderful title. And these first three chapters are beautifully written. Well, I'm glad you like them, sir. When can you give me more? A week? Two? Well, uh, I can have three more chapters next, uh, Monday. Uh, that's pretty fast writing. Oh, I can handle it, Mr. Latimer. Oh, fine, fine. You know something, George, this, uh, this work shows great improvement over your past performances. Oh, I think I've touched on the answer to my writing problems, Mr. Latimer. Good. Stay with it, my boy. Stay with it. Well, I will, Mr. Latimer. I will. Frustration, Mary. You've got to show it here. We want the reader to understand what frustration will drive a man or a woman to do. Yes, I see what you mean. Of course you do, and you're doing fine, Mary. How many chapters have you turned in now, George? Twelve, Mr. Latimer, and all quite good, too, don't you think? Yes, yes, excellent. You think we can finish The Silent City by, say, uh, around the 1st of June? Well, now I don't know. I'll tell you what. Suppose you take the rest of the month off, huh? I'm anxious for you to finish the novel. I'd like to start it rolling as a serial in one of the national magazines. Uh, drum up interest, you know. All right, Mr. Latimer. I'll see what I can do. Now, I don't want inferior work, but I want speed. And I'm willing to pay for it. Does, uh, does this check convince you? Five thousand dollars? Mm, a token of our faith. Uh, call it an advance. What do you say, George? First of June? First of June, Mr. Latimer. First of June, you'll have my novel. You leave Latimer's office, keeping your hand in your pocket, feeling the crisp authority of the check between your fingers. And you know that this is only the beginning. But Mary Jordan, you haven't been wanting to think about that, have you, George? But now you've got to think about it. What's to become of Mary Jordan? Five hundred dollars? Why, George! It's all I... yours, Mary. A token of our faith. Call it in advance. <laughs> Do you think that will take you away from the cafe? Oh, I'm as good as through now. Then uh, what do you say we get right to work? We have a lot to do if you're going to get the novel finished by the 1st of June. The 1st of June? Oh, I'm sure I'll have it finished by then. Days flow into weeks. And as you sit there making notes for Mary to follow at the typewriter, you're a little surprised with yourself. You're actually beginning to feel a little sorry for her. Too bad that things have to turn out this way. But you can't think about that now, can you? The book is more important and it must be finished. Then a week before deadline, you drop in and see Latimer again. Well, George, we're almost finished, aren't we? Yes, I'm just about ready to wind up my first novel, Latimer. Just about ready to wind good, it up. Good, good. You know something, my boy? I've mentioned your novel to a friend of mine. He's with one of the big motion picture studios. Just sketch the idea briefly to him, and he's crazy about the silent city. Oh, he is, eh? Naturally, I told him I'd have to talk to you before we went ahead with anything. Well, naturally. You know what it means, of course. Why, they'll pay a fortune for your novel, and what publicity. My boy, take my word for it. In another few months, you'll be sitting on top of the world. <laughs> Hello, Mary. Oh, George, come on in. I've been waiting for you. <laughs> well, I'm sorry I'm so late, Mary. I had a lot of things to do in town, you know, and I missed the bus, too. <laughs> say, say, isn't that a new dress? Uh-huh. You like it? Well, turn it around, turn it around. Mmm, <laughs> mmm, mm, very oh. pretty. <laughs> and say, what's this? The table's all set, candles, it... You, you're not expecting someone, are you? Oh, just a little celebration for the two of us, I... I thought it would be nice if we had dinner. Oh, oh, yes, yes. We uh, should celebrate, shouldn't we? What? Oh, what do you mean? 
Well, you'd already made your final note, so I thought I'd surprise you. I, I worked all last night after you left, and most of the day, and I finished the last chapter. You finished it? Yeah. Oh, I knew you'd be surprised. I made up my mind last night. Oh, you've been so wonderful about everything, so I decided... Well, I decided I'd finish up that last chapter if it killed me. <laughs> You glance over the completed chapters on the desk next to the typewriter. And then you look at Mary, standing there in the middle of the room, in her bright new dress, glowing with pride. You hadn't expected the end to come so soon, now that you're faced with it. You've got to do it now, now, before you change your mind. You remove the silk scarf from your neck, tie a knot in it. Mary has her back to you. She's fussing around the dinner table. And slowly, you cross the room toward it. That's all I have. Oh, gosh, I should have bought some rolls, too. I guess we can get along without... <gasps> yes, it's all very sad, isn't it, George? But it had to be done. You pick up the final chapters of The Silent City, stuff them into your briefcase, along with all the other papers on the desk. You can't leave a single trace of The Silent City here, can you? Then one last thing before you leave. You step to the dinner table and blow out the candles. You hurry down the stairs and out into the dark, deserted street. A few yards up the block, a car is parked at the curb, but you pay little attention to it. And then as you walk past it, you stop in your tracks. George? Huh? George. The voice is familiar, isn't it? Yes, very familiar. You turn and walk slowly to the car. Hello, George. Elka, what are you doing here? You mind if I ask you the same thing? So you've been following me. You've been... Uh -huh. I know all about your little trips to see Mary Jordan. At least that's the name on her mailbox. I wish you hadn't done it, Elka. Get in, George. I'll drive you back to town... We have a lot to talk about, don't we? Yes, we have a lot to talk about. Oh, hello, Mr. Malcolm. Hello, friend. How's everything? Ah, you know how it is afternoons. Kind of quiet, just the regular customers. Uh, bourbon, like always, Mr. Malcolm? <sighs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, Mr. Malcolm, I, I seen something in the papers a little while ago. That dame, uh, that lady used to come in here with you a lot, Miss Robinson. I uh, heard you call her Elka. Yes. Funny. I mean, it's kind of unusual name. That's why I remember. Well, in the afternoon paper, there's a story about... That's... That's right, Fred. Oh, gee, that's tough. What do you suppose happened? Well, just as the papers say, I guess, evidently drove her car off the road. Lost control, huh? Went into the river and drowned. Oh, gee, that's tough. Well, that's the way it goes. Uh-huh. That's the way it goes, Fred. The Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending to tonight's story. Meantime, for the benefit of you who missed last week's Whistler, I want to repeat what we honestly believe is today's greatest tire value. I'm referring to Signal Dealer's new price on Lee Deluxe four-ply tires, just reduced from $15.25 to only $12.95 plus tax. Imagine only $12.95 for a nationally advertised top quality tire in the popular 616 size. Other sizes proportionately low priced. If you've been comparing prices, you know that $12.95 is actually less than the second-line price of some tires. But this is not a second-line tire. In fact, Lee of Conshohocken has never in 45 years made anything less than top quality. And today's Lee Deluxe four-ply tire, which signal dealers are now featuring at $12.95, is the same quality, has the same patented double-life cord construction, which made Lee tires outstanding among leading brands. 
So if you're going to be needing tires, save by taking advantage of Signal Special for your summer driving safety. Get your Signal dealer's trade-in offer for your old tires now. See for yourself that for value plus quality, your best buy today is the top quality Lee Deluxe Tire, which Signal dealers are now featuring at only $12.95. And now back to the Whistler. Yes, George, you can rest easily now. It's all over. There isn't a soul alive who can trace you to 375 Miller Avenue, Beachmont, and to the murder of Mary Jordan. There's a small news item about it in the afternoon paper, the same edition that carries the story of Elka's accidental death. That was unfortunate, too, wasn't it? But then Elka was the link, the only link connecting you with Mary Jordan, and that link had to be broken. Now the novel is finished. Your novel, George. And soon you'll be seeing your name on that stack of gaudy jackets. Yes, that's what you've wanted all along, isn't it? Early Monday morning, you walk into Latimer's office with the final chapters of The Silent City. Good morning, Mr. Latimer. How's the old... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I didn't know you were busy. Come in, George. Come in. George, this is Lieutenant Bates of Homicide. Hello, Mr. Malcolm. Well, how are you, Lieutenant? Look, if you gentlemen are discussing something, I'll come back and... This concerns you, Mr. Malcolm. Oh? It's, uh... It's about the silent city, George. Your novel, isn't it? Why, uh... Yes. Yes, it is. A girl was just found murdered up at Beachmont. Mary Jordan. Ever hear of her? Jordan? Mary Jordan? No. No? I'm afraid not, Lieutenant. Never heard of her, hmm? No. Okay, Mr. Latimer, read him the letter. Letter? Well, what letter? I received it Saturday morning, George. It's from Mary Jordan. What? What? Says something about putting it in the book, wanting it to be a surprise, repaying you. Read him the last part of Miss Jordan's letter, Mr. Latimer. To the man who spent so many unselfish hours aiding me in writing my first novel, The Silent City, in gratitude, this book is dedicated to George Malcolm. Let that whistle be your signal for the signal oil program, The Whistler, each Wednesday night at the same time. Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automotive accessories. Signal has asked me to remind you, to get the most driving pleasure, drive at sensible speeds, be courteous, and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life, possibly your own. Featured in tonight's story were Wally Mayer and Sarah Selby. The Whistler was produced by George W. Allen with story by Gilbert Thomas and music by Wilbur Hatch and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Next Wednesday, for a full hour of mystery over most of these stations, tune in a half hour earlier. Enjoy The Saint as well as The Whistler. This is Marvin Miller speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>